I'm currently in Hobart and I'm with Boiler, who has made his own electric car. Boiler, let's have a bit of a tour of it. Okay, mate. Well, it looks like a regulation Daihatsu Japanese cheapest chips runabout, but um, it's going back eight years now we decided um, <clears throat> the electric car revolution needed to kick along and the best way to do that was to actually build one. At that stage you couldn't buy an electric car in Australia at all, so there wasn't much option. So if you step up close you can look inside, you'll see um, where there used to be a petrol motor. So but originally this was a three-cylinder. Three-cylinder yeah. petrol engine, yeah. Down in here is a three-phase motor. Um, another black box here, which is a bit hard to see in all the chaos, is converts DC from the battery, electric car, uh, DC from the battery into three-phase, which makes it easier to control the motor. Here's a, what looks like a very familiar car battery, uh, and it is, and that runs the radio, the lights, the, even the heater, because you do need a heater in this latitude. And the only other change is this little gadget here, which is a, a vacuum pump, because with a petrol engine, the vacuum provides uh, power for the brakes, and this has got power brakes, although it's quite a small car. So the, 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 that is the main mod. That that's the other modification. Now, so, now, Boiler, you bought all the parts for this yeah, they're electric motor. They're readily available. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're several. You'd call them hobby shops, really, but all the bits are easily available. Yeah, mm. and and the cost was about eight eight thousand dollars. You say? Yeah, this is eight years ago. It was eighty eight hundred dollars, which was for the new motor, the control unit, the 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 uh, vacuum pump, and also a charger for the battery, so that there's an onboard charger, so that the, I can charge this car wherever there's any power point. Wow. Uh, any, any domestic power point. Now, if someone else was to do that. <clears throat> now, you're an ele electrician by trade, so if someone else was to do that, th there would be a, quite a substantial labour cost, wouldn't there? Yeah, the labour cost, if you actually had to pay somebody to do it. People have actually tried it in Australia and nobody's been able to make a go of it. Uh, <clears throat> it's the, the, it rapidly gets up to twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to do a conversion if you, if you had to pay anything like commercial rates. Yeah. So it's strictly for a dedicated hobbyist. Yeah, but your savings by not having to go the petrol. Yeah, there's an enormous amount of savings. Yeah. Um, well, this car runs on sunbeams to a large extent, so I reckon it's probably 1.5 cents a kilometre. Wow, mm. yeah. Um, and of course, electric cars don't have any maintenance. Um, the only fluid you can change on this car is the windscreen washer. Yeah. And possibly you might check the fluid in the brakes every so often, but even the brakes don't get used too much yeah. because it has dynamic braking. Right. So. Uh, when you slow down, you use the energy, uh, it feeds, it uh, couples energy back into the battery, so you recover some of the energy you use to drive the car back into the battery. Yeah. The commercially available ones do it better, but this one does it reasonably well. Yeah. And um, let's just have a bit of a walk around the car. Sure. I like how you've actually got your your power charger where the old petrol <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, this is... You'll see this is where the petrol cap was. It's completely a regulation three-point power um, a cable. So you have this, you can switch between mains power and solar panels on your roof. Yes, you can set up a timer to do that so that whenever the sun's out, you're actually charging the car. Or you can override that so that if you need to charge the car for some particular reason, you can simply pay for your mains power. But it's still very cheap. Yeah. So it's, I, I guess, for a hundred dollar, um, hundred k's of motoring, you might pay five dollars at full commercial price for your energy. Um, if you get it from God, it's much cheaper. Wow! Mm. Mm. So Not you, the religion comes cheap. So a hundred kilometre range. So for approximately. So with, mm. Yeah. So for pretty much anyone in a capital city. Oh, you um, would never need more than that. You mm. said before the average punter does about thirty-eight kilometres. Yeah, that's Australia-wide. Much less in a small city like Hobart. Yeah. So if you just want to go to work and back. Traditionally, everywhere in Hobart's 10 kilometres, yep. so you'd be lucky to do 20 a day. Yeah. Mm. Can we look at the battery there? That's actually yeah, in sure. the back. Yeah, You can see, compared to my grandchildren, the size of it. <laughs> Jump in there, Mr Louie. This is a future, isn't it, Louie? <laughs> so there's the battery. And it's actually in the same place that the fuel tank was. Yeah to make the point and also because it was a good place to put the batteries and you'll see there's another yet another black box in there yep. and that is the battery charger yep. 
So that converts 240 volts into DC for the battery. Yeah. Mm. I suppose the next thing is uh, boiler will be go for a bit of a drive. All right then. That's what it's for. <laughs> So boiler in the car, it looks like a normal, it looks like just an average car. Let's let's uh, turn her over and hear the roar. <laughs> well, it'll be t totally silent. So um, for a chap that's never been in an electric car, are you happy to g yield your electric car virginity for this trip? I certainly am. <laughs> okay. Well, let me let me walk you through. I'll, this, this one's um, definitely bespoke, so it has its quirks. I'll turn the key on. You'll hear it very faint clicking in the background, which you don't expect in an electric car. That's actually the vacuum pump that we talked about before yep. that runs the brakes. And then there's a main switch, a little clunk, which is a large relay kicking in because we're dealing with very large amounts of current, 500 amps, which is a lot of juice. And then you'll see there, there's a nice little gauge and that tells us um, uh, engine revolutions and current. Switch that switch, you'll see here it says drive, neutral and reverse. Now, so it's all electric. Put it into reverse because we use mechanical reverse in this car. We're now moving. You'll notice it's totally silent. Slightly eerie the first time you do it. Yeah. All right, so we're taking off. There's no noise at all. Now, the, with the gearbox, was that a hard thing to connect up? Because you have got the original gearbox in, haven't you? Uh, the original gearbox is there. We had to make an adapter plate to fit the motor on. Now we're moving very slowly down my bush driveway in the middle of Hobart. <coughs> and you'll hear it's the only thing you can hear is road noise. Of course, there's lots of power. Because these um, electric motors have all their power. Boiler. Once a hoon, always a... Oh, once a hoon, oh, yeah, bloke. <laughs> Electrical. I've never grown up and I'm not in any hurry. The um, electric motors have all the power at zero revs, so you get all your power where you need it low down. So even though this is a tiny baby car, it's dynamite at the lights. So um, as, you can see, as you can see, we can skid the wheels without any trouble. It is a wet day. Now I'm running the car in second gear because I can and probably won't need to change. The electric motor has so much flexibility that you can leave it in pretty much any gear you like. Commercially built cars don't have a gearbox, they have just a, a, a single speed and you rely on the flexibility of the electric motor. This one only has a gearbox because it had a gearbox and it's too expensive to change it. So this car was designed to be built in a suburban or a bush backyard and also designed to be the bargain basement price, hence we got it down to under $9,000 but of course not including labour. Now, um, what's stopping this from going further with electric cars? Um, like, you know, when I first met you and I saw you d did it yourself, I thought, why is this not happening more? What, what, is, the, what is the difficulties with it happening? Um, well, <clears throat> it's not as cheap as you might think. The, the bits are relatively cheap, but if you have to pay somebody to do it and you don't have the hobby expertise to do this same job, I reckon would be about $22,000. We did do that estimate. It's probably a bit of a stale estimate. But to do it, um, it, it would you be prepared to spend $22,000, on particularly a car like this one, which is 22 years old, um, uh, much older now, but it, it's, um, it's probably not a proposition to do commercially. People have tried it and not managed to make a living out of it. Right. Um, and the reason there are no electric cars or very few electric cars in Australia, shouldn't say no, there are quite a few, is like any other brand new technology, very comparable to solar panels, um, most countries have provided some government um, incentives to change. And in Norway, for example, which by the way has got lots of uh, petroleum, 30% of their new cars last year were electrics because they don't want the air pollution and all the disadvantages of internal combustion engines. In Australia we haven't come to that conclusion yet and Australia does have different problems because we have much longer distances. Um, it's much harder to build an electric car that will go very long distances. Almost there but not quite. Yeah. However, since most of us are commuters, that's really where these things come into their own. Like this one only has a design range of 100 k's. I've never ever run out of 
uh, energy. And when you bring it home after, say, running it down, running the battery down, what sort of time frame does it take to charge that battery? Um, if I've run it to a third capacity, which is what I normally would do, probably needs two hours on the charger, two and a half. Oh, wow. Re remember, we're talking about just the same charger that runs your electric toaster. Yeah. So it, it's not, I've got no provision for any high current charging. I could do, I just don't need it. Um, if it's dead flat, down to say 5%, it might take five hours. But I generally try to gear that to the sun as a matter of principle, really, so that I'm not really paying for the energy at all. Um, I like, like to, you know, this is an experimental car in that sense. If I need to charge it, I can. It's probably $4 to charge it from flat, so it's still much cheaper than buying a tank of fuel. Um, and you, you also mentioned earlier, Boiler, that uh, one of the hold-ups in this technology taking off is that there is a lot of interest in electric motors and electric battery, batteries for electric motors, and that because of this, supply and demand, it's very hard to... Yes, supply and demand are way out of balance. Every time we think the batteries will be cheaper, there's another demand for them. Like they're now, um, the, the, the home batteries like the Tesla Wall and other brands, people are buying those up like mad. And of course, last year, I, sorry, year before now, um, well, last year was it, I was in South Australia when they opened the famous big battery, um, when Elon Musk promised that he would have a, a, a hundred megawatt battery up and running in 90 days or it'd be free. And they did it with plenty of days to spare. Um, but imagine how many batteries on how much battery capacity that soaked up. So the uses for lithium ion batteries are multiplying and there are only two mega factories. One's in the USA, which is the Tesla one and the Chinese have one. We probably need four or five of them. So there's a huge market opportunity, particularly for this country, because we've got plenty of lithium. So however we wanted to do an, um, reintroduce some serious manufacturing in Australia, there's a wide open opportunity in my humble opinion. Now you also told me, Boyle, that you approached the Tasmanian government about with the proposition, which you fully costed, uh, in regard to converting all their fleet to electric cars. Yeah, we did, and that was, um, I'm a member of the Electric Car Association, um, which is both a hobby group and a lobby group, um, and it's a place to go if you want to build an electric car like we did. Um, you can get your... Um, you can get help from fellow early adopters or crazy people or whatever, like any other hobbyist. Um, and that, by the way, is telling me that the battery's still a bit cool. All right. And it's warming up. It does better when it gets warm. The um, So we're a hobby group in that sense, but we're also a lobby group because we're committed to the idea that this country would be well served by being less dependent on petroleum from overseas. Just to give you a number, Tasmania spends $1 billion a year. This little tiny state spends a $1 billion a year on importing petroleum. Obviously, we have none of our own. Wow. If we could, say, have half the car fleet, uh, particularly light, light vehicles and increasingly heavy trucks, which are now coming on the market, if we could save a $1 billion a year and that money stays in the state, we would not have a deficit in the budget. And scale that up to the national situation, the Australian energy bill is $30 billion a year. And if you imagine an extra $30 billion a year not flowing out of the country, perhaps it might be also something which um, the Treasury would look at favourably. As it is now, a huge amount of that money goes to buy racing camels or to provide rich Americans with bigger cars, as far as I can see. <laughs> so it's something we could do something about now. And, and I mean, there would be no reason why a factory couldn't be set up even in Tasmania. We did talk about that. Um, the, um, it's because these uh, electric vehicles have very, very few moving bits. Um, the, the, the Tesla workshop, well, there's no workshop, but the Tesla spares inventory in Sydney, which is the only place they have any in Australia, has 30 parts. And an internal combustion engine car has 12,000 parts. So the thing is inherently simpler i.e. you can have a simpler um, construction uh, uh, production line. We did some research, we being a group of us involved in electric cars in the state, thought we could set up a pretty respectable factory for a hundred million, which, you know, when you roll it off your tongue, 
doesn't sound much, but compared to setting up billions or multi-billion dollar complex car factories, it seemed a proposition. But it's certainly something we can do in Australia um, because it's not particularly labour intensive. There are all sorts of revolutions happening. People are already printing using um, uh, uh, printing the bodies rather than fabricating them. So uh, it, it, the future's expanding before your eyes. And just, I suppose we must mention, Boiler, that you set this car up eight years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and things have moved along. So this is an experiment from eight years ago, really. Yes, and it's had some... It was set up to, as a demo, it was a political statement and a lot of fun. You know, boys like to make things, but... Um, Every politician in Tasmania practically has ridden in the car and it's been featured on the ABC and all that. And I think what it has done, and this is what we wanted it to do, was to promote the idea that this technology is not somewhere off in the future, we can have it now. But like all new technologies, it will take some time to be implemented. Um, people have got to make a cultural ad adjustment. It's, it's a very different way of looking at things. And I, I think also, like you look at a Tesla or something, there, there's waiting lists and they're, they're quite expensive oh, um, to get into a Listen Australia. to that noisy car, <laughs> belching fumes. What a nerve. He just spent $5 at least. It it's cost him $5, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, you've done it, you've shown an example that, you know, for, for people who may be on a budget, they can do it themselves yeah. and, they can, and they can do it cheaply and, and save a lot of money in the process. Yep, yep, it can be done. Well, lots of us have done it. There are lots of home builds around the country now. I think when this one was first registered, uh, there were only four electric vehicles in Tasmania and there are hundreds now, including wow. Teslas, lots of Teslas. Um, and there are some, uh, some very good commercially made cars. We just went to a launch last week, a, a Hyundai, brought out a new car called an Ionic that has a 250k range and it's coming down more to a price that more, more, uh, the, the more affordable price it's somewhere between 40 and 50 grand and when you look at the savings over the life of the car it's highly competitive already with petrol cars but where it really um, and where we've been trying to interest governments and some bigger businesses in this is people who run a, a fleet of cars um, where, they, uh, where the cars are running constantly, it's absolutely a no-brainer to have an electric because your fuel costs pretty much vanish um, and no servicing. So your cars are never off the road and I'm you're not having... having a bit of difficulty here in your boiler. <laughs> yes, I know. They, they... <laughs> Look, we're, we're up to about 15 minutes there, boiler. Um, yeah, we'll listen to that. Yeah. God. <laughs> Shame on that chap. <laughs> Oh, it is a nice. I mean, on a motorbike, but you know, on a motorbike though, there is something about being very noisy. Oh yeah, that is fun. all of all of us love yeah. cars <laughs> yeah. different ways. Yeah. But look, boiler, we're, we're up to about fifteen minutes now, and, and, and I think I'll cut it there. And, and if anyone's interested in what we've been talking about, maybe we'll have a follow-up video. Yeah. So we'll see what interest is in you know do it yourself. Um, boiler, thanks for your time. Fantastic to to drive in your car and to see how you've done it all. And um, yeah, this is this is the future. This is the future. So the future's here. How do you feel now that you're no longer an electric car virgin? Are, <laughs> oh, you, smi are you smiling? <laughs> it's um, it, it's. I mean, it, it, there is noise. Like I was thinking, there would be absolutely no noise. But as people can hear, there is still road noise. Yeah, yeah, there, and and yeah. there's no problem with the power. No, um, no, there's completely far more power than any petrol car. Yeah, yeah. Boiler, thanks for your time. It's entirely a pleasure, mate.